It is critical to understand model grid spacing and what meteorological features are resolvable. As we continue to gradually increase the resolution of models, there is a change in what models can resolve. Knowing this is important because we are starting to see different grid resolution model output from all of the various weather models, not just in the ensemble systems, but also in how the data are displayed in visualizations like DESI and on private weather sites. In the Comet Applied NWP course lesson on resolvability, the Orlansky diagram is used to help define what is resolvable, given the horizontal length scale. This also ties into what features a model can resolve given its horizontal grid spacing. As we move right on the x-axis, the length of scale increases by a factor of 10 with each tick mark. On the y-axis, the time scale increases from bottom to top. We're focused primarily on what happens with the length scale on the x-axis. When figuring out what the smallest scale feature is that a model can resolve, you look at the lower end of that feature. Using thunderstorms as our example, which cuts off around two kilometers, the minimum grid spacing to effectively resolve a thunderstorm would be two kilometers divided by five grids, which equals 0.4 or 400 meters. On the high end of that range is 20 kilometers divided by five grids, which equals four kilometers or 4,000 meters. This is important because the 25 kilometer GEFS can effectively resolve features as small as 125 kilometers. 25 kilometer grid spacing times five grid points equals 125 kilometers. But the ECMWF at nine kilometers can effectively resolve features as small as 45 kilometers. Resolving large thunderstorms is barely possible in the ECMWF, but is not possible in the GEFS. We aren't even taking into account parameterizations that can enable things like convection. We're only looking at what the model grid spacing can resolve. Numerical weather prediction tends to resolve features on the scale of the model rather than their real world scale. This can lead to large errors in size, intensity, and upscale growth characteristics over time. Parameterizations help mitigate this effect. In other words, it's not as simple as whether NWP can resolve a thunderstorm or not, but rather whether it aliases what should be isolated storms into a mesoscale convective system. This impacts what the different ensemble members will contribute to the probabilistic space, potentially affecting the statistics and how the data look in the NBM, WSEP, DESI, and other probabilistic tools and displays. The models contributing to the NBM on the far left of this graph may be able to resolve individual thunderstorms, but thunderstorms in the models on the right half of this graph may end up being represented as an MCS, something that could bias probabilities for related meteorological fields.